This video will look at different ways of setting up a screening tool and applying that tool to your studies using single data entry. Screening is the process of deciding which studies found in your search meet the review's inclusion criteria. The inclusion criteria are created based on the review's scope and question. We normally first screen the items based on title and abstract and those that meet our inclusion criteria are then screened again using the full paper. In this example, the inclusion criteria has been initially set up as a series of questions with yes, no, and unsure as possible answers. Each question is based on the different inclusion criteria that help define the review scope. Using this method, the user will need to answer each question and then determine which items are included based on the yes responses. This is one way of setting up a screening tool, but not necessarily the best way. If your approach to screening is to identify the items to exclude as quickly as possible, then one of the issues with this screening tool is how to easily identify the items that only have yes responses. The answers are separated by the questions, so you need to look at each question and separately to see the chosen responses. The approach we would suggest is that rather than asking a number of inclusion questions with multiple answers, we would create a number of exclusion criteria. If we can exclude an item on one criterion, the item is out and there is no need to look at any of the other criteria. If the item cannot be excluded, then the user can select the loan include criteria. The included items can easily be identified by running a frequency report to identify the ones assigned to the single include criteria. If you look at version 2 of the screening tool, you can see how the tool is set up with all the criteria at the same level of hierarchy. For the first criterion, rather than asking if the study was reported after 2000, we have an exclude on date criterion that the user will select if the study was not published after 2000. At the end of the tool is a criterion labeled Include based on title and abstract. If the coder is unable to exclude an item based on any of the criteria, they will need to select the Include criterion. The order of the criteria can be adjusted so the Exclude criteria that is applied most often is at the top of the list. Placing the criteria in this order can help save you time as you may not have to look at as many criteria for each item. To help the coders apply the criteria, explanations can be entered in the description field. These descriptions are displayed at the bottom of the screen. Let's use this tool to screen some items. To begin, let's allocate some items to code to one of the users. EpiReviewer will keep track of what you've coded and not coded when you create a work assignment. Now, create a group of studies for allocation. I've created a code set called Allocation Groups, and this set is a code named All Items. Select the items on the left, and after right-clicking this code, select Assign Selected Items to this code. All of the items now have this code. It is the items with this code that we will now use to create a coding assignment. Next, go to the Collaborate tab and we will set up a coding assignment. Click on Create New and for the Code Studies in this group option, pick the All Items code. For the Using this Code Set option, pick Screen on Title and Abstract version 2. And for the To this Person option, pick the person who will be doing the screening. If you have multiple coders, you can create a number of coding assignments. You would just need to have a different allocation group for each person. Finally, click Assign Work and you will see the assignment created. For this example, I have coded a number of studies earlier, so there's just two items left under remaining that we need to look at. The system will keep track of what has been coded and not coded, and in this case, I have allocated myself some previously coded items. You can avoid this by being selective about what items you place in your allocation group. Now click on the two in the remaining column and they will be listed in the Documents tab. We can then go into those items. Our tool is visible and ready to use, so let's code those items. Looking at the abstract, we can't exclude it on date or language or the participants or the country. Notice that when we set up the tool, we added the list of OECD countries to the description box to help the coder. The intervention is fine. For study types, it seems to pass everything as well, so I will select Include based on title and abstract. If you are not sure whether you can exclude the item, you probably need to be inclusive and include it. Later, when you look at the full text, you will be able to make a more definite decision. For the next item, we can exclude it on date, so it is gone. We have finished our item, so close the Document Details window. We now want to know which of our 10 coded items have been excluded and which ones are included and we'll move on to the next stage of the process. You can now easily identify these items by running a frequency report. Right click on the screening code set and select display item frequencies. The frequency of the selected codes will be displayed. If you click on the include criterion, the items will be listed. You may now want to assign the excluded items the exclude flag to separate them from the included items. 
By default, all items when imported or created are assigned the Include flag. These are the items that are displayed when you log into your review or click on the I icon in the Documents tab. The items that we have excluded could be assigned the Exclude flag so we no longer have to deal with them. The Exclude flag is not automatically tied to any screening tool as the reason someone decides to exclude an item could be based on coding choices made across many different coding tools. To assign the Exclude flag to those items, return to the Frequency table, select a criterion, select the items in the Documents tab, and click on Assign Documents to be Included or Excluded. In the Assign Documents window, pick Select Documents, be sure it is set to Excluded, and click on Assign. Do the same for the other exclusion criteria in the Frequency tab. Now, when you click on the Include icon, those excluded documents will not be listed. You can still list them by clicking on the Exclude icon. The next stage in the process would be the retrieval of the full study of our included items. This could be managed by creating a full text retrieval code set. This is an example of what it could look like. You would start by marking all of the items as not in file, and then as you retrieve and upload your full text documents, you would change its coding. Once the papers are retrieved, the included studies could be screened again using a new tool called Screen on Full Report. Depending on the reviewer's requirements, this might be very similar to the Screen on Title and Abstract tool. You can follow the same allocation process as with Title and Abstract screening. This would include creating new allocation groups for the full-text screening and new work allocations. For more information about EPI Reviewer 4, please see our other videos or go to the EPI Reviewer 4 Gateway. The web address is shown on the screen.